Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. That was great. Uh, for those of you guys who are probably wondering where we are, we are currently at our family spring retreat. And for those of you guys who can't join us, we're actually going to live stream our Saturday morning session so that you can also experience uh, what God is doing up here. Uh, so we hope you guys are able to enjoy the worship today. And so uh, today the format's going to be we're just going to go straight into our worship and go straight into the message with a time of response. Uh, for those of you guys who are joining us for the first time, we'd love to connect with you guys. Feel free to click on one of the links below, and we'll see you guys next Sunday. And with that, uh, let's just take a few moments and prepare our hearts and come before our Father. As we think about, come to me, and I will give you rest. Let's just come to him right now. No matter how our weeks have been, no matter how even our sleep last night was, that we can come to him this morning and find our rest in him. Let's spend a few moments preparing our hearts there, and we'll get started in our worship. everyone's enjoying the retreat i'm from the east coast so um this is like i feel really spoiled i think all of us are like wow these accommodations I feel like we're in the botanical garden it's like really really pretty here and yeah we're just enjoying the rest one good thing about being also in rest is that we can take the time to create space and to see the beauty of our god right we see it all around us who said that yesterday was it pastor sam was like um good job God on the tree right <laughs> so, so like we should do more of that while we're here and this first song we're going to sing this morning um, Jen's going to lead us into it it's called beautiful one we were debating if this crowd is too young to remember this song or if even oh praise them we were like we're not sure but so so help us out here we're going to sing this together amen
that again. Oh, come and take up residence. Sing Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, welcome in. We make space. We make space. We make room. We have come to yield to you. We make space. We make room. How we long to be close. We make space. We make space. We make room. We have come to yield to you. We make space. We make room. How we long to be close to you. Oh, come and take up residence. And Jesus, Jesus, welcome in. Oh, come and take up residence. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, welcome in. Come on, let's do that in our hearts this morning. Usher him in with our praise. Scripture says that he rides on the praises of his people. And as we sing, we build his throne in this room. Just take a moment right now to just lift him up with your own words. I need your love like I need water. I need your love like I need breath inside of my lungs, burning my heart just like a fire. Come and take me over. Jesus, draw me closer. God. 
Cause your love is so much sweeter than anything I tasted. I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart. So pull me a little closer. Take me a little deeper. I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart. Cause your love is so much sweeter than anything I've tasted. I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart. I want to know your Your love is so much sweeter than anything I tasted. I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart. So pull me a little closer. Take me a little deeper. I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart. Love is so much sweeter than anything I tasted. I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart. I want to know your for me oh 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 how great is your love oh 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 how great your love is for me oh 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 how great is your love oh 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 how great your love is I don't know Jesus I am here to learn from you Jesus I want to know your heart want to know your heart show me more Jesus show me more of you We 
just want more of you, Jesus. We just want more of you. We open our heart to you. Touch us or fill us. Move in us, God, and transform us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You can, you can be seated. Yeah, you know, what a, a beautiful Sunday morning, <laughs> right? Yeah. You know, I was afraid that uh, I was going to miss the Sunday service, uh, but God did a miracle. <laughs> God did a miracle. Yeah. Wasn't that, I think Friday night was a blessing, and Saturday was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. I think it was one of the best sermons I ever preached in my life. You know, at least that's what I would like to believe. <laughs> anyway, let's get into the ser- Let's get into the sermon. Today, a uh, new relationship, and I want to focus on freedom from bitterness. Okay, freedom from bitterness. I want, to say, I want you to say to your neighbor, you are God's temple. Okay, say that to your neighbor. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. This is biblical. Don't you know that you yourself are God's temple? And that God's spirit dwells in your midst. And God's people said. All right. So, you know, I have a slide uh, with the picture of the temple in the Old Testament. The temple in the Old Testament. And when you look at this picture, uh, the Old Testament temple had the outer court, right? The outer court. And then the inner court, sometimes they call it the holy place. And then the most inner court, the most inner place another name for his holy of holies okay the holy of holies now uh, i was thinking about that because the bible says you are god's temple you are god's temple and the way i see this okay it helps me this helps me the outer court is your physical body okay is the physical body the outer court it's like the five senses to, you know, discern what's going on, uh, you know, uh, uh, outside of you, like eyesight, hearing, taste, touch, smell, the, all the different chemistry that's going on in your body and in your brain, the neurotransmitter, the, your immune system, you know, uh, how you feel, your immune system is very important, your gut, gut health, your brain health, sleep is very important, diet and regular exercise, you know to be healthy in the outer court. And, and it's very important, that outer court, the physical body, is very important for emotional, mental, and spiritual health. This, you know, the spiritual health. And then we go into the inner court. Okay, we go into the inner court. And that's where, you know, uh, is, uh, is, is the mind, is the emotion, and your will. Okay? And then... The holy of holies, the most inner court, is the most inner place. And I believe this, again, this helps me, okay? So this helps me. I believe that's your heart, right? And that is in your heart that you commune with God, okay? And from your heart as you commune with God, God's life flows out of your heart into your mind, into, you know, touches your mind, uh, your thoughts, your emotion, your will, and your body. Right? Uh, this is the place where you connect with God. It's the, uh, some people call it the human spirit, the inner person, the inner person. It's also a place for the greatest spiritual battle. It happens in your heart, not outside of you, but inside of you. It's that spiritual realm, the territory where you cannot see your heart. Okay, does that make sense? Right? Uh, and, and in the Bible... It talks about, um, uh, uh, it prophesies water in scripture. 
You know, when a nation is in trouble, where there's plague and sin and oppression, idol worship, there's a prophecy of water, right? Pools in the desert, stream, flowing stream, rain. And uh, Ezekiel 47 describes it as this water that's flowing out of the temple. Temple, Ezekiel 47. Okay. And it describes as, at first, it's just trinkle coming out of the temple waters. And then it goes ankle deep. Then it goes knee deep. Then it goes up to the waist. And, and, and then it's, the river flows out of the temple, right? And, 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 and it's so wide that nobody could cross it. That's what Ezekiel 47 says. And the water enters the Dead Sea and turns the salty water into fresh water. Where the river flow, in Ezekiel 37, it says there's life. Whatever the water touches, there's life. So you are his temple, okay, and God flows out of you. Okay? In your connection with the Lord, God flows out of you. It, it flows out you know, uh, in you, through you, and out of you. The spirit of God. Okay? God's life flows through his people. Okay? That's what Christianity is. Okay? It's not legalism and just work, 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 work. It's God's life flowing out. Like what I said, the dry bone. The spirit of uh, breathe upon the bone and comes to life. It comes to life. And in the New Testament, John chapter 7, verse 38. John chapter 7, verse 38. This is God. L river of living water will flow from within. Okay? But this is Christian life. See, creativity, imagination flows through God, through us. Okay? It is the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, that produces the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that produces love. It produces joy. It produces goodness and patience and kindness and faithfulness and self-control. See, when you are connected to God, and isn't that holy of holy in your heart, that's where you connect with the Lord, and, but there's also spiritual battle there. The devil wants you to disconnect you. That's what happened. That's what happened in the Garden of Eden. God and Adam and Eve, there was connection. There was relationship. There was intimacy. That's why there was no shame. That's why they didn't get sick. That's why they had healthy thoughts. That's why they had healthy emotions. Okay, that connection with God. And, but then the devil comes into the garden. Okay, do, you, do you remember Genesis? The, the, the serpent comes into the garden. Right? And there's spiritual warfare that happens in your heart. And so uh, when you're connected to God, he, his life flows out of you. Uh, you have your identity, transformation, spiritual maturity. There's freedom. There's deliverance. There's healing in that connection with God, the Holy of Holies. God dwells in the Holy of Holies, right? And so, you know, so our ministry, when we minister, okay, our life, uh, ministry and life, it is out of the overflow of God's life through us. See, there's a spiritual principle that I want you to understand. We can't give what you don't have, okay? You can't, you could fake it, you know, People could fake, I have joy. You come to church, praise God, I'm so happy. And then you're just, once you get in your car, you're miserable. You're faking it, right? right? But, there, but you know, if you don't have joy, you can't give other people joy, okay? If you don't have love, you can't give other love. Forgiveness, if you don't have forgiveness, you can't give others forgiveness. Patience, if you don't have it, you can't give it to somebody else. That's why in Acts 1 8, or Acts 1 8, the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And then you'll be a witness in Jerusalem first. Jerusalem doesn't mean, I believe, literally city of Jerusalem in Israel. But this is the model that God gave in the book of Acts, how God touched the disciples in Jerusalem where you are first. Where you are first. Okay? And then the Bible says in Acts 1 8, you'll be a witness in Judea. So if you cannot love people that's next to you, don't go to Judea. 
Okay? Don't go to Judea. And then you go, but that's how God's life flows. God's love touches you. His power touches you. There's more fruit of the Holy Spirit. Where you are in Jerusalem, with your spouse, with your children, with your church member, that's Judea, right? Goes to Judea. If you're like, there's so much hatred in the family, and at church you act like, oh, you know, everything's perfect, and you're, the, there's so much joy and love. No, that's not from the overflow. It's faking it again. That's faking spirituality. Okay? It starts with love, connection in your heart, and it flows out to your family. And when it does that, that's why elders, it talks about family first. Okay? And if you get that backward, church is very unhealthy. It's all about image. It's about legalism. It's religious spirit. It's about performance. Right? But it's a life that flows. So God touches you in Jerusalem. Then it goes to Judea. And when you could do that in the church, wow, you could go to Samaria. You could go to San Francisco. <laughs> huh? Yeah. And God could use you to be a witness in San Francisco. And when you are able to do that, how to hold the presence of God and have God flow through you. You could go to Africa. You could go anywhere in the world and God will use you. You know, there are people who said they're called to missions and, you know, they can't get along with people in the church. They just, you know, they don't get along, you know. Uh, uh, they, there's always conflict in the church. And I used to send a lot of missionaries out from the church and they would come to me, Pastor Sam, it's because I'm supposed to be in Africa. Not in New Jersey. In New Jersey, God, God can't move in me. But when I go to Africa, <laughs> right? when I go to Africa, God will move in me, Pastor Sam. So I go, oh, I believe them. Oh, yeah, I got Okay, we'll send you to Africa, right? And there they, they even, they're more bitter <laughs> than Africa. Right? If you can't love people here, you can't love people in Africa with different language and different culture. Right? You got to be able to love here. And that's how God wants to work in you. You know, uh, the reason I want to talk about bitterness is because bitterness stops the flow of God's spirit through you. Bitterness does that. Uh, bitterness is, the Bible says the bitterness, uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. Right? This is what the Bible says about bitterness. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. When there's bitterness, you're going to fall short of the grace of God. Okay? And that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile many. What does the Bible say about bitterness? Okay? You will fall short of the grace of God. Okay? It's going to cause trouble in life. And it will defile not just you. When there's bitterness, it defiles many. Okay? It defiles many. Okay? And uh, so instead of God's blessing, instead of that river of living water flowing through you, the opposite happens in your life. It causes trouble. Instead of God influencing you, the, uh, this passage says bitterness defile. Defile, defile, that word is to use the work of the devil. Defi it's the devil that defiles. Right? So when you are bitter, the devil is influencing you more than God. Instead of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, when you are bitter, it's going to cause bad fruit in your life. Okay? You know, I've been in ministries for 30 years, and I have ministered. Uh, and work with people from many different backgrounds, you know. And, uh, I was ordained in a black church, you know, when I first became ordained. I work with people with different personalities, you know, uh, uh, who uh, they could be the dominant, extrovert, introvert, perfectionist. I ministered to people with all kinds of brokenness, abuse, trauma, rejection, and shame. Those who choose not to be bitter and forgive, right, I saw God heal, God redeem, God restore. I ministered to people who were going through tremendous demonic attack and bondage. And I, those who choose not to be bitter and forgive, I saw God set them free and deliver them. 
But those who do not change out of 30 years of ministry that I've been doing and working with people, those who can't overcome, those who remain in brokenness and bondage are those who are very bitter. Okay? Are those who are very bitter. You know, as a pastor doing 30 years of ministry, I experienced a lot of hurt and pain and rejection. Uh, uh, it's just a, a so much, right? So much. And, and I remember uh, one day I was talking to Pastor Peter because we're going to Romania and we had all this time. So I was just sharing all, all the things that I went through. He got so mad. <laughs> he was bitter. <laughs> it was so painful that he got bitter, right? And, but I chose okay, not to hold on to bitterness. God, and then you know what I saw? When I did that, God could, God still moved through me. God still blessed me. I can still love. There's still fruit of the Holy Spirit joy. There's still fruit of the Holy Spirit peace. It is the bitterness and resentment that I hold in my heart that brings bad fruit in your life. Okay? What is bitterness? Uh, a bitterness, uh, next slide. Bitter uh, uh, or bitter root is the offense that we hold on to in our heart. In this broken world, we're going to all go through different degree, you know, uh, 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 rejection, betrayal, uh, abandonment, neglect, abuse. Okay? But when you get rejected, what ha what's bitterness? It is the judgment offense that you hold on to and you don't let it go. Someone hurts you, hurts us, we start to judge the person who hurt us. And bitterness is planted and grows in our heart. That's the bitter root the Bible's talking about. And bitterness opens the door to, to spiritual attack. It causes bad fruit in your life. It causes trouble and defile many. It, de it will defile you spiritually, mentally, emotionally, even physically, relationally, and on your calling and your purpose that God has for you. How can you be bitter and do God's work? The most bitter people are the ones that's doing most damage in the church. You cannot do God's work, fulfill his purpose with bitterness. Right? See, if emotional wounds, uh, you know, we all got hurt. Again, we, li we live in a broken world. Nobody has a monopoly on rejection. If you feel like you have the monopoly on rejection, it's because you're bitter. Okay, <laughs> there's bitterness. Right? We all got hurt, we all got rejected, but different degree, okay? Uh, we got betrayed, ne there's neglect, there's abandonment, there's abuse. So we need to know how to be, as a Christian, be free from bitterness. Most of the time, you can't choose how other people reject you and hurt you, but you can choose how long you hold on to the hurt. It's a choice that you and I can make. You can choose not to be bitter. Okay? You know, Emotional wound uh, uh, is the hurt feeling, the emotional pain. And I want to teach you about emotional pain. It's not sin. Emotional pain is not sin. Okay? Uh, it's the bitterness and unforgiveness, the resentment that's sin. Okay? Why? You know, Jesus felt hurt. You know that, right? If he went up to Jesus and he pinched him, what do you think Jesus would say? Ouch. <laughs> Okay? Jesus was rejected, okay, and it hurt him. That's why when he saw the rejection from Jerusalem, he wept for Jerusalem. He wept. It hurt him, right? Uh, 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 Jesus was hurt from betrayal, misunderstanding, abuse. People, you know, you know, it went like, can you imagine what Jesus went through? He went to a synagogue and preached the sermon, preached the truth. And the people in the synagogue, okay, the holy people there, got offended. They dragged him out of the synagogue, took him to a top of a hill to kill him. Did that ever happen to you? You know, Mark, Pastor Mark, when you preach a message, people didn't like it. They got so upset. They took you on top of a mountain to kill you. I will be forever emotionally scarred. <laughs> 
if I had that experience. I would be emotionally scarred. You know, Jesus went to a town to minister to them. They all came out. The, all the people in the town came out and said, please, go. Don't come in. I would be really hurt. <laughs> you know? And, 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 and uh, 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 but we see Jesus on the cross. Jesus said, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Right? Jesus was, got hurt. Right? He felt the pain of rejection, but he was free from bitterness. Right? He was free. If he, was, if he wasn't free from bitterness, you know what he would have said? Angel, come rescue me. You know, let the world all go, you know, die. <laughs> but he was free from bitterness. That's why he, he was able to fulfill his father's purpose. Okay? You know, uh, 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 emotional wound, we're not that uh, 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 reasonable with emotional wound, but we are reasonable when it comes to physical wound, you know. Uh, say there's a large splinter in your arm, okay, large splinter in your arm, of course. Ah, <laughs> can you feel the pain? And mo all of you, most of you, okay, I hope all of you know what to do. You take the splinter out. <laughs> Right, and you get some anti, you know, uh, some lotion or antibiotic. If it's really deep cut, you go to the hospital. You go to a doctor and get stitches. And you, you know what to do when there's physical wounding. You seek healing. <laughs> right, uh, but people are not reasonable when it comes to emotional wounding. You know, there, okay, th there's a your heart. I don't know what it looks like. Okay, think about your heart. Right? There's a splinter in your heart because of rejection, maybe neglect, abuse, betrayal. There's a splinter in your heart. Okay? What do you do? You don't clean it. You let it get infected. Some of you, you push it in deeper. You, know? you go, ah, oh, I know. I'll push it in deeper. <laughs> right? that's, that's, that's what some of us do. I'll just that much, you know, push it in deeper and you make it worse. Some of you, there's a splinter, you know, in your heart. You go, ah, oh, this hurts. I'm in pain. What do you do? You get another splinter. You start stabbing other people. <laughs> right? Hurt people, hurt people. Right? You start stabbing others. Right? When there's emotional wound, okay, it's communicating. It's, it's the grace of God. If you didn't physically feel pain, you put your hand on a hot stove, you know, and it does more damage. Because of the pain, go, whoa, danger. I'm not going to do that again. <laughs> I got to be careful here. Okay? Emotional wound communicate to us what's going on inside of your heart. Just like warning light uh, in your car, right? You know, the engine light. Oh, I'm going to just ignore it. <laughs> okay? And you're going to break down. Okay, there's brake light. Ah, oh, just ignore it. And, and when you go get into an accident, you're going to hurt other people. Okay. There's a signal that tells you what needs to be fixed. Emotional hurt sing signal that instead of getting bitter and resentful, instead of judging others who have hurt you, okay, that pain signal, you need to seek healing. Okay. You need to take time. To seek healing. If you don't seek healing, there will be a breakdown. Uh, some of the symptoms, I just put down some, you know, you know, from just personal experience, you know, symptoms of bitterness, the warning light that signals bitterness. Because some of you might go, oh, I'm not bitter, okay? I'm not bitter. Uh, and so I just want to kind of give you some symptoms to help maybe uh, discern the signal more, okay? Number one, when there's bitterness, one of the symptoms is you'll not be able to overcome spiritual battle. Okay, you'll not be able to overcome spiritual battle. There will be more bondage and stronghold in your life. Okay? It's not that God does wanna, doesn't want to set you free. You're choosing bitterness. When you choose bitterness, you're choosing bondage. That's what you're choosing. Okay? And, and you open your heart to many other spiritual attacks. If you have, this, uh, that you have bitterness... What you're doing is you're inviting, there's a door open to demonic attack from, you know, spirit of bitterness. 
Uh, but then after a while, their spirit of rejection, their spirit of, because of bitterness, the devil could use you to cause division, right? And because of bitterness, religious spirit. There's other spiritual war uh, attack that you'll get because of bitterness. It opens you up to more spiritual attack. Number two, there'll be a continual pattern of dysfunction when there's bitterness. Meaning, even though you're a Christian, you don't see much transformation in your life. You fall into the dysfunctional pattern again and again and again. Like the Israelite in the wilderness, they were so bitter and complaining, you know, so much. They didn't look at God, you know. So, you know, the first trial was lack of water, and they failed that trial. Third trial was lack of food. Second trial was lack of food. Third trial was lack of water again. They failed. They, were, they keep failing the same trial, similar trial, again and again and again. Yeah. And then well, what the devil wants to do when you are bitter, keep that dysfunction going from down the generational line. Keep that dysfunction going down the generational line. The generational sin, divorce. Do you see some families that if you look at the generational line, it's divorce, 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 divorce. Adultery, fatherlessness, addiction. You know, they say alcoholism is, you know, genetic. So I, I could accept that. But as a Christian, you got to also see the spiritual side. The spiritual bondage. The spiritual bondage. And it goes down the generational line. And number three, God's blessing is blocked. When there's bitterness, it's like, you know, God wants to bless you. You're there. God wants to just pour, open up the storehouse and bless you. But when there's bitterness, it's like an umbrella that, that blocks God's blessing. You can't see what God, you go, God's not, he doesn't love me. He's not here for me. He, he forsake me. When there's bitterness, you can't see, it, it blocks God's blessing. You can't hear his voice. You can't receive his blessing. Okay? Number four, right? hurt people. What? Hurt people. Okay? When you're bitter, you will hurt others around you. Okay? You start to hurt uh, the people around you. You know, uh, There's this uncontrollable anger. Again, when there's bitter root, what, what, you know, a tree with roots, what happens? It produces more and more bad fruits. It's a bitter root. Right? And, and uh, you get easily frustrated. You start to lose trust in others. And you start saying, if you're saying there's no such thing as love in the church, it's because you're bitter. <laughs> right? You're bitter. Right? You know, you know you, if you say, you know, there's, there's somebody that I met, you know, uh, he said this, I, Pastor Sam, I found out I don't have to spend time with Christians. I don't have to go to church. I could go in my room and just worship all alone with me and God, me and God, you know. Yeah. And you know what? He got hurt a lot. He got hurt a lot from people. If people tell you, okay, this is what they, you know, close friends, they tell you, I feel like you have a wall. It's very hard to get to know you. I feel like I don't know you. It's difficult to get to know you. You got hurt a lot. Yeah? You got hurt. When bit bitter, what happens, but we got to overcome bitterness. You start taking it out on the person that's closest to you. Yeah? And you start to hurt important relationships, innocent people, and even people that's trying to help you. Okay? They're trying to help you. You know, when you're in college and you become a, you're a Christian, you're in college and, or young adult, you know, that, that age group, uh, 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 it's easy to uh, run away from your brokenness, okay? You know, when at that age, you could kind of cover it up by doing a lot of ministry maybe. In college, you, you're very involved with Christian fellowship and your church, and, but you come from a very broken family, right? You could run away, from, and when you're in college, you could kind of, run away. But then you graduate from college and you find, you get a job. Okay? And when you get a job, spiritually to me, it's like a, 
a punch in the spiritual goat. <coughs> I go, oh, I didn't know work was you know, this hard. You know? I didn't know, you know, it was going to be this difficult. Oh, my, you know, it's like a punch, right? But most of us could kind of handle it. We adjust, okay? But what happens is, when this is when God says, you can't run away anymore. You get married. <laughs> okay? okay? You get married. Married couple, am I speaking the truth? Uh, don't, you know, you know, spouse, okay, okay. I don't want you to get into a fight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just nod in, in your heart. <laughs> okay. yeah. And, and uh, 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 you see, when you get married, the past brokenness will leak out. It might not leak out in college. It might not leak out at, when you're working, but it will leak out when you get married. All the childhood pain, rejection, abuse, and shame. You know, you did a very good job walling it up all those years. Then when you get married, it will leak out. When you get married, you will project the abuse, the anger, the pain, the rejection to your spouse. Okay? To your spouse. And, but maybe you're fighting. For, no, you know, you're, trying, you're not going to deal with the brokenness. And there's another way. Uh, God said, no, you're going to have to. Uh, a baby is born. Okay? A baby is born. And it's God's way that he's t- saying to you, you can't run away. Okay? If you don't get healed from past brokenness okay, and, and deal with the bitterness, you project your brokenness to your child. Okay? And when I saw that, that's why I can't do this. That's that one place. You look at a baby. Why would you want to abuse your baby? Somebody's so innocent. You project your anger to your child. You overcompensate through fear. Where's that fear coming from? Not because you had a baby. It's your childhood brokenness. It's all coming out. The control, the domination, the manipulation. Okay? If your mother was manipulative, when you get married, okay, and maybe you control this, but when you have a child, it will leak out. It will leak out. If your dad was dominant, it will leak out when you have a child, if you didn't get healed. And so, you know, you, you know, uh, 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 you, if, even with authority figure, you know, you got really hurt, I don't know, 10 years ago or 15 years ago or as a child. Uh, and, and what you would do, then you're going to not trust any leader. You'll just say, this man, this woman is so uncaring, don't listen, controlling, you know, unapproachable. Unapproachable. Okay. Number five, bitterness affects you physically. Okay. It will affect you physically. There will be anger, there will be stress, there will be anxiety, there will be high blood pressure, you can't sleep, it will break down your body. Bitterness will break down your body. You know, uh, and, you know, sometimes you can even see it in your face. Do you, do you know that? If you're bitter, you can see it. I remember we were having an inner healing retreat. This lady from another church came. When she came, when I saw her, her face, oh, wow, she's a bitter person. <laughs> okay? We could all see it. Okay? You know, bitter person. Okay? And then... During the retreat, God touched her, and she let go of the bitterness, and she got healed, and she forgave all the people that uh, 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 hurt her, right? And after three days, we saw her. She's, uh, she's beautiful. <laughs> Man, her face is like an angel. She's so beautiful. So if, even how you look, right? If you want to look good, it's not the name brand clothes or... Makeup or, you know, BB cream. <laughs> okay? Overcome bitterness. Amen? Amen? <laughs> okay, okay. Amen. Amen. Number six, there's growing judgment. In Matthew 7 talks about a, a person with the log in the eye. And the problem with uh, a person with the log in the eye is a person who's very bitter. Because, you know, did you go to the beach and the wind blows, a little sand, you know, particle went into your eye? It's very painful. Well, this person has a log <laughs> in the eye. Okay. And, 
And it's describing somebody who's very bitter. You know what a bitter person do? Speck! Speck! I see speck. <gasps> I can't believe you got speck. Speck, 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 speck. Every, you got speck, you got speck, you got speck. They can't see the log in the eye. They can't see the log in the eye. They see, they, they're very good at, you know, some of the speck, you need a magnifying glass. I see it. <laughs> I see it. You know? And bitterness uh, uh, gets stronger. The judgment becomes stronger even though, you know. And so what happens, this is the enemy's plan. So eventually you're so bitter. If you're bitter at your biological father, you know what you're going to say? All men are bad. I was going to say something else. <laughs> this, okay? All men. Okay? If you're bitter toward your mother all right, from childhood, you'll say all women are bad. If it's a church leader, you know, you're going to say all pastors, all leaders in the church are bad. It just covers everybody. All right? Number seven, okay, if that doesn't, you know, motivate you to overcome bitterness, number seven should, okay? You resemble what you resent, okay? If you have resentment toward your mom, okay, you're going to become like your mom. I know you're, no way, okay, no way, never. Ask your husband. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. Ask your husband. Oh, but, but then you're going to get... Uh, First, overcome the bitterness so that you don't kill him. <laughs> if you have resentment toward your dad, okay, you're going to become like your dad. You have resentment toward leader. Any leader that rises up that has bitterness, you know what? They make terrible leaders. Terrible leaders. I'll do better, you know. You see, they don't know what to do. It's all coming out of bitterness. But when I get the position... I'm going to bring revival. And <laughs> they don't. They hurt more people. When bitter, you go towards those you are bitter toward and become like them. Become like them. So, we want to go through the steps to be free from bitterness. Okay? Steps to be biblical steps to be free from forgiveness. And it's forgiveness. It's forgiveness. It's forgiving. Right? That's the biblical way of overcoming bitterness. Okay? Uh, it's not going to the sauna or something like that. You know, it's, it's forgiveness. Uh, 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 but you got to understand what forgiveness is not. What forgiveness is not. Forgiveness is not minimizing the seriousness of the hurt, the rejection, the offense. Forgiveness is not relieving the other person of their responsibility. That's not forgiveness. That's not biblical forgiveness. Forgiveness is not trusting the other person again uh, 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 when he or she uh, is trusting the other person even though that person's unsafe. That's not what forgiveness is. If someone repeatedly wronged you over and over again, you are obligated to forgive over and over again, but you don't have to become best friends with them. Okay? You are allowed to set boundaries. And that's what I had to do with my mom. At 57, still, I have to do that with my mom. Right? When she crosses that boundary, she'll call me. When she crosses that boundary, I say, Mom, you crossed the boundary. I'm hanging up. I can't. Okay, call me back when you come. And I won't hang up. Okay? And uh, if, someone, if someone hurts you, you know, uh, forgiveness is my part and my responsibility, but trust needs to be developed. Okay. Trusting relationship takes two committed people. Forgiveness is by grace, but trust is built over time. Okay. Trust, grace is free, but trust is earned. Do you guys understand? You know, uh, one example is there's this young pastor that hurt me a lot years ago, a, a lot. He hurt me a lot. And, and he left, and years later, he called me. You know, hey, Pastor Sam, you know, hey, I just was thinking about you. And, uh, uh, you know, hey, it's been a while. How about meet up? You want to meet up? And I go, oh, sure. Let's meet up. It's years later. And then as I was talking to him, I realized he didn't change at all. 
He didn't change. He was the same guy, you know, years before. He didn't change. You know what I did? I told him, I don't want to meet with you. And hung up. No, I said, I don't, I don't want to meet with you. He didn't change. Right? So what's forgiveness, though? What's biblical forgiveness? Number one, stop judging the person who hurt you. Okay? The Bible talks about good judgment and bitter judgment, you know, the, the bad judgment. The good judgment, you know, uh, uh, the Bible says the church will judge, you know, the world. <laughs> you know, we will judge. Uh, and, and, and what is that kind of judgment? It's, it's, it's related with correction, correcting people, and even rebuking and discerning. Uh, but it's not out of bitterness, but out of love. You got to really, be, you know, discern this. Is motivated not because you're so angry at them, you're bitter at them, you have resentment at them, you have all this judgment toward them. That's not why you correct, you, you judge. You judge, why? If there's love. You look at that person and you go, you know, I want to see transformation in that person. I want restoration. I want to see redemption. Or if this person keeps going this way, he's going to hurt himself or she's going to hurt herself. So I need to help. And I need to speak truth into their life. That's good judgment. That's good judgment. And so when I have to confront people, if I'm really angry at them and, you know, I got all this judgment, oh, this lazy person, you know, <laughs> you know this you know, uh, sinner, you know, if I had that kind of, I, I don't talk to them. I go pray and release. And I have to ask myself, do you want what's best for this person? And then God will show me what to say when I do that. And that's how I, that's a good judgment. But again, Matthew 7 is talking about somebody with the log in the eye. That person should not judge. That's what Jesus said. You, if you have a log in the eye, do not judge. Right? You can't see clearly. You only see the speck in other people. You're doing more damage. Say you got a log in the eye. Okay, I see a speck. Okay, let me help you. Okay, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I just poked out his eye. <laughs> you do more damage. You can't see clearly. You do more damage. So what Jesus says in that passage, first, take the log out of your eye. Okay, first take the log out. Yeah, uh, then you can see clearly. Focus on healing. Take the log out of your eye. And then you can see. Then you can judge. Amen? Okay. Number two, release the offender to God. Romans 12, verse 19 says this. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. So, you see, you're not, when, when you're hurt, <laughs> Okay, you're, you're not a good judge, you're not a good jury, you're not a good executioner, okay? As a judge, guilty, <laughs> okay? Uh, as a jury, go to prison, <laughs> As a death, <laughs> you know, that's uh, always the same thing, you know, if you're bitter. Release the offender to God, the best judge. Even though, what you're saying, even though you hurt me and you owe me a debt, I'm writing it off, you owe me nothing, it is not my place to make you pay, and I release you to the judgment of God. He is the just judge, and he will rightly decide the case. If there's any penalty, he will collect it. Okay? Uh, you know, and I try, I try to do that, and it's so funny uh, what I see God do. There will be people that really, you know, I got hurt by, right? And I will release them to the Lord. You judge them, God. I, I, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to judge you, God. You judge. And there will be time where God really made it, I think, you know, this is what I'm, made it so difficult for them. Right? And, it, and, and God's doing that to make them repent. And you know, sometimes well, I look at somebody and, and it's so harsh, I go, God, Grace, come on, <laughs> you know, <laughs> great God, <laughs> Jeez. 
a little too much. <laughs> uh, I was a little. Uh, and there will be like somebody who hurt me. I forgave, released them to God, and for a long time I don't see any vindication. Right? And years later, though, I would meet them, and you know what I, what I found out? God completely restored them. They're transformed. They're a new, pe- new person. And I go, thank you, God. Thank you. And there are some, I got, I got hurt a lot. <laughs> I, got, I got hurt a lot. Right? There are some, oh God, you know, it's been like 10 years. <laughs> no, it's, it seems like it's getting blessed. What's going on here? What's going on? <laughs> okay. But I still say, God, you are the better judge. Right? You are the better jury. Right? You're mo- you know all things. You're a much better judge. You're a holy judge. And I still leave it up to him. Amen? Number three, respond to evil with good. Okay, respond to evil with good. Luke chapter 6, verse 27 to 28. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemy. Do good to those who hate you. But again, it's not me. It doesn't mean become their best friend. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. That you can still have that bond. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. This is a deeper level of forgiveness. Again, it doesn't mean you have to become best friends or spend time with them. But you get to that place where you can bless them. It's hard. Some people, it's very difficult for me. But then I have to work on it. I have to work on it. I work on it to be able to bless them. It's going to another level of forgiveness. More than letting God vindicate me, you want to see, like when I bless them, uh, and I have to develop this, God, I really want to see change in that person. I really want to see them overcome. And God, bless them. Bless them. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, there was uh, another pastor. Uh, I got, he hurt me a lot, too. <laughs> okay, this guy hurt me a lot. And uh, uh, two years later, I, you know, uh, two years later, I heard from uh, their church member, his church member, uh, that he went into a severe depression, a very severe depression. And that so severe, he can't even come out of the house. Yeah. He couldn't even come out of the house. And when I heard that, instead of going, serve him right, I didn't do that. I had a lot of compassion for him, so much compassion. And so I called him. Yeah. I called him up. I said, hey, uh, you doing okay, brother? And he just shared openly uh, the difficulty he was having. And, uh, you know, hey, know that I forgive you. You know, that time, you know, uh, I forgive you, and I bless you. I bless you. And he's crying. I blessed him. A month later, he came out of depression. Yeah, he came out of depression. Number four, repeat the process as long as necessary. Matthew 18, verse 21 to 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sinned against me? Up to seven times. You know, he thought he was being very righteous and holy. You know, up to seven times. And Jesus said, no, I tell you, uh, 77 times seven, you need to forgive. And so here, uh, you know, if you have a calculator, was it 500 something? No. I said, I'm going to count every one. You know, one, I think one time I gave two, 15, 16. Okay, I got 100 more times I'm going to forgive you. <laughs> okay? That's not what it means. All right? Uh, that's not what it means. Uh, it means that, uh, 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 in other words, don't even count. <laughs> that's what Peter was doing. He was counting. Don't even count. Number seven is God's number, representing completion. Okay? Representing completion, meaning completely forgive. No matter how long it takes, completely forgive. Okay? Uh, 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 keep forgiving until the pain stops. Keep forgiving until you can bless the person. Keep forgiving until you can love like Christ. So my rule of thumb is, you know, I thought, you know, there's somebody who hurt me, and 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 uh, I said, I forget. I spend that time forgiving God. I, you know, release the judgment. I release. I forgive God. Lord, you vindicate me, and I feel better. And at Costco, you know, I'm buying something, and I see across the aisle over there that person, 
and emotionally, it's ah, oh, stirring up. I go, man, I got to go back home. I have to continue to forgive. Right? And then and, and three months later, you know, I see them driving by. I go, I get stressed. I get all stressed. I don't need to forgive. A year later, you know, I see him with his daughter in the park, and I have peace. Right? That's when I could stop. I have the peace of God that transcends all understanding, that guards my heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen? Okay, let's pray. I'm going to close in prayer, and then we're going to shut off the streaming, and then we're going to ministry. And worship, worship and ministry. Lord, uh, um, eternal life, a relationship with you, anointing of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit happened because you took all our sin, every brokenness, every rejection, every abuse, every neglect, every betrayal, every pain, every hurt, and you took upon yourself and you forgave us. And you said in your word, forgive, for I forgive. You are our model. You are our example. So we choose to forgive. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, let's go into worship, and then we're going to ministry. Let's rise.